Smith Charts. In this tutorial, we are introducing Smith Chart and its application to an antenna system. In the past few weeks, we've been talking about transmission lines and what are the various terms that are related to it. Some of the important terms like impedance, admittance, characteristic impedance, load impedance, and reflection coefficient were talked about. We even talked about the matching techniques and its relevance to an antenna system in making the load impedance equal to the characteristic impedance. In all of these discussions, we dealt with complicated equations. This is where Smith Chart comes in. Smith Chart is a very simple and interesting tool that is going to help you visualize the impedance of a transmission line, identify what is the value of VSWR, and an antenna system as a whole as a function of frequency. It is even used in impedance matching techniques which we will be discussing later. And this is how a smart chart looks like and I understand that it might look a bit complicated with lines going everywhere. Before we start I would like to say uh, we are going to use smart chart to represent the all possible values of impedances that can be there and as a function of frequency on a reflection coefficient plane. That is, all the values of impedance are marked with respect to the coordinates defined by the term k, which is your reflection coefficient. We'll start with reflection coefficient and how these values are plotted on your Smith chart. How do you define reflection coefficient? k is equal to zl minus z0 divided by zl plus z0. And the value z0 is your characteristic impedance and zl is your load impedance. Now from this particular term I can rewrite the ZL value as ZL is equal to Z0 into 1 plus K divided by 1 minus K. This basically tells you that the term ZL is a function of the real part of K and the imaginary part of K. What does that mean? It means that all of these terms, your ZL value, your Z0 value, your K value, they are all complex functions. Complex functions. Complex functions have a real term and an imaginary term, right? Okay. So, depending on the values of ZL and Z0, we can generate a plane where all of the K values can be plotted what is the maximum and minimum value that the k can take? The minimum and the maximum values can be between 0 and 1. That is, if you have a k value is equal to 0, it simply means that there is no reflection. If you have a k value that is equal to 1, it means that, what does it mean? It means that there is complete reflection. Thus, they all must lie within the unit circle radius. If I am to draw a circle having a radius of 1, then all of the possible values of k will be falling within this particular circle. This is how a reflection coefficient plane looks like. The value at the intersecting this vertical axis and the horizontal axis the intersecting value is 0 and the maximum value it can take is 1 this unit circle this is a unit circle you can see that it has an imaginary axis and a real axis so all of the possible values of k should fall within this region over here we're going to take a few examples and see how the values of reflection coefficient k can be plotted on the plane. So for all of the examples I'm going to assume that the characteristic impedance value is 50. If I'm having a value of k is equal to 0 0.5, what does this mean? This is a real value, right? There's no imaginary part. It's completely real. So where would that lie? It should lie on your horizontal axis. So you can see over here the value of 0 0.5 if this is 0 and this is 1 the value of 0 0.5 lies in the middle of it. If I'm taking a complex term 
minus 0 0.3 plus i 0 0.4 so this is a real part and this forms the imaginary part the negative real part so it has to be on towards this side from 0 and the imaginary part is positive which means the value should be on to the upper part of the vertical axis so combining these two it should be on the left quadrant and your value falls with a negative 0 0.3 that might come over here and a positive 0 0.4 of the imaginary part and the intersecting value comes here. Another example, what is this? L gamma is equal to minus i means it's completely imaginary. There is no real part involved in it and the value being minus of i means it is minus i into 1. So from 0, sorry 0, you have to go down minus 1. So if this is your 0, this is your negative 1 value and your reflection coefficient falls at the negative side. So this is positive imaginary part and negative real part this is positive imaginary part and positive real part this is negative imaginary part and positive real part and this forms your negative imaginary part and your negative real part so you can see that this is a complex plane on which the gamma can take a value anywhere between 0 and 1 so this forms your reflection coefficient plane and the basic of smith charts and that's the end of part one